welcome back to Science at Work. Following our episode on Brunel, we've got two real engineers, Elsa and Jolti, a structural engineer and a civil engineer. Elsa, a structural engineer. She's going to tell us all about the exciting work and projects she's involved with and answer some of your questions. Hello, I'm Elsa. I'm a structural engineer and I work for Expedition Engineering. Thank you so much for sending in all your questions about being an engineer and also for sending in those drawings. Um, let's say lots of you liked my orange outfit. Um, I'm going to answer some of your questions now. Gabby and Erin from Enfield and Izzy from Hertfordshire all asked me what I like best about my job. I really like working in a big team who are all working really hard to solve these um, complex problems that we get given and design really good structures. I also really like that real people get to use them in the end and if we do a good job it can make a big difference to lots and lots of people. Eva from Glasgow asked a really good question which was do you get to build the structures that you design? And the answer is no, not normally um, because there are two types of engineering companies. One is a consultant and one is a contractor. I work for a consultant and we design the building. We work with the client from the very beginning of the project um, and we design it with a team of architects and other engineers. And then when it's ready, we hand it over to a contractor who then goes and builds it. So Thea no. from Hertfordshire asked if I've got to cycle in the velodrome. Um, the answer is not yet, but I would really like to. I'd like to go and see the roof especially. Um, it's made out of a big cable net which is hung from the edge of the building and that's how they've got the curved surface of the roof. So I'd like to go and see that. Megan from Cornwall asked about building with bamboo. She said, is it hard to build with bamboo and why did we build the research lab from bamboo? Um, we used a manufactured bamboo product rather than the raw sticks of bamboo that you might have seen. Um, so it wasn't too hard to build with. Um, it was very strong and adaptable to the structure we were building. We chose bamboo because um, you're going to be able to see it in the final building. It was part of the roof structure above everyone's head. Um, so it looked lovely, but also it's a very sustainable material. Mohammed from Glasgow asked, when you use natural materials like bamboo, does it affect the natural habitat of animals? And which materials are best for both us and animals? Um, it's a really good question because it's something that engineers and architects and clients are thinking about more and more. Um, we are trying to minimise our impact on habitats and the environment, but every material that you use has some impact. So it's about making choices that can make that as small as possible. Charlie from Hertfordshire asked, was the Stockton Bridge designed to look like a fish? Um, it wasn't, but um, you're dead right, it does look like a fish. And that's because the support, which is at the top of the fish's tail, is not in the middle of the river. Um, it wasn't allowed to be. Um, and the two arches that the bridge is made out of are joined together to make it more efficient. So it does end up looking quite like a fish. Brunel didn't have time to answer all the questions you sent him, so I'm going to help out by answering a few now. Um, first is from Honey from Newcastle who asked why a bridge is curved. Um, it's really good that you spotted that pattern, well done. Um, and in Brunel's bridges there's the Clifton Bridge which has got the big curved cable. Um, it's that shape because when you hang all those weights from it, it naturally takes that shape. Um, cables work just in a pulling force which we call a tension and that means that you don't need very much material to support really big forces. Edward from Evesham and Henry from Newcastle both asked how bridges stand up. There's lots of different ways a bridge can stand up and there's lots of types of bridges. Um, Brunel used a few of them. One is a suspension bridge like the one at Clifton in Bristol. Um, that works by hanging the deck, which is where all the people and the cars go, by cables up to that big curved wire at the top, which is then suspended between the two towers. 
Um, that works in tension, so those cables can be really small for the big forces that are in them. He also designed arch bridges, which is similar but upside down. Um, so you've got a compression force in the arch. Joanna from Newcastle asked what material to use for building a bridge. It's a really good question. Um, Brunel used lots of iron in his bridges and bricks as well. Um, nowadays we use steel and concrete much more often, but you can also build a bridge out of timber or even bamboo. Um, it depends on the forces that are going to be in your bridge. So we work those out by knowing how long the bridge is, what it's carrying and where it's going to go. And then we choose the material. Ben from Hertfordshire asked, why did you choose to become an engineer? I really liked maths and science at school. Um, but at home I liked building things and I liked figuring out how things would go together myself. Vera from Glasgow, Niti from Leicester and Erin from Cardiff all asked, what was your inspiration for becoming an engineer? Um, when I thought about how maths and science would help me make real practical things, that was really exciting. Um, and my teacher put me in touch with some engineers that used to be her students. And I, when I spoke to them and I heard more about their jobs, I just wanted to do it more. Penny from Cardiff asked, what skills do you need to become an engineer? You definitely need to work hard and be good at maths and science at school. Um, you also need to enjoy working in team um, and problem solving, um, especially working in a team to solve those problems, because that's what we do every day. Annabelle from Dumfries and Galloway asked, are there lots of girls at Expedition Engineering? Um, and yes, there are, but it's a really good question because historically there's been lots more men engineers than women engineers, um, although more and more women are getting involved, especially on the design side where I work. Joan from Cardiff asked, is your work dangerous? Um, my work isn't very dangerous because I work in an office most of the time, doing calculations and sketches and having meetings with the rest of the team. Um, but it can be really dangerous on site and we have to think about that quite hard when we're designing the structure to make sure it's as safe as possible for the people who are going to build it and then the people who are going to use it. Marcus from Hertfordshire asked, what's the best building you've helped to build? Um, and it's not quite a building, but at London Bridge Station, I helped to build the platforms where the trains arrive. So whenever I go and get a train from London Bridge, um, I can stand on my work and I can see all the other passengers standing there too. And I really like that. Erin from Dennis asked, what's the most exciting project you've ever worked on? I've worked on lots of different types of projects, um, schools and shops and uh, train stations and a university and hotels. Um, and I've worked on research projects too. And I think they're really exciting because if you do it well and you can show that what you're researching is safe and it's practical and everyone can use it, then you can change uh, how everyone designs buildings for the better. Oshadam from Cardiff asked, what and where would your dream project be? I'm not sure my answer is very exciting because I think I would like to have a project that was round the corner from where I lived or from where I worked so that I could see it being built and then I could see it being used by everyone. So something nice and big and public and somewhere close to where I live. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. Um, I hope that gave you a bit of an idea about what it's like to be an engineer and that some of you are interested in becoming one. civil engineer. She's going to tell us all about her work and answer your questions. Hi everyone, my name's Jyoti Senev and I'm a senior engineer working for Costain. I'm currently working on the High Speed to Enabling Works contract, so that's based in London at Euston Station. So I've got some questions from Joanna from Newcastle and Eamon from Birmingham. Uh, the first one is, what's the most exciting project that I've worked on? And the other one is, what was the hardest project? And I'm going to answer them together because they've probably got the same answer. And that was working on London Bridge Station. Um, so that was a redevelopment of the station. And um, that was it was really exciting because we did a lot of work um, in a very short amount of time. But it was a really great learning experience. And... Um, because you had to learn a lot very quickly. 
So an example of that, you can see a photo on the screen now of what is a concrete column. And so that is a very tall structure. And if you go to the station today, you can see these in the main concourse. And this kind of structure would have been built in a few days. Uh, this is one that I was personally responsible for building. Um, and that also brings me on to a really fantastic question from Dante in Enfield about what materials did we use to build London Bridge. So like I've said, this, con this column here is concrete, but you can also see it's got a steel cage inside. So most of the station is built of this combination of steel and concrete, which is something we call reinforced concrete. So that's a lot of what the structure is made of. But you can also see in um, this next picture that there's, you can see wooden timber soffits on the top. So that's the, that's underneath the tracks. Um, and so that was one material that we used and it was, it's called an acoustic timber because if you go in the station, you'll realize that you can't actually hear the trains from the concourse. And that's because of this timber, uh, pan these timber panels that you can see, um, which help to soften the noise from the trains. I've also got a piece of what we use as cladding. So that's, you'll see that on the walls, it's kind of beigey kind of color on the walls. And uh, this is something called glass reinforced concrete. And so if I turn it around, you can actually see that it's concrete, which is combined with glass fibers, and that gives it properties to make it uh, stronger and more durable. Uh, but it also means that it can be a really thin panel, which makes it much easier to lift and put into place. So then we've so got a question from Jaden and Evangeline from Enfield about how long it took to build London Bridge Station. Uh, so it took six years to build the whole thing, uh, but it would have been in design much longer before that as well. And then I've got a question from Ethan from Chippenham about whether any problems with London Bridge in terms of environmentally, did we experience any difficulties with animals? And um, because we're in central London, we're not really building on a green area. So we didn't have more of the, the traditional problems with a protected species or anything like that. But our biggest issue were pigeons. We had pigeons nesting uh, in the station and whenever a bird is nesting, whatever bird it is, it becomes a protected species. So you're not allowed to disturb them in any way. We also had a lot of foxes on site. Um, so I often remember seeing some foxes running around site. But again, that was just about making sure that they weren't in our work area and trying to shoo them away. Um, so that we could get on with works without risking them. I've also got some questions about building High Speed 2, which is the project I'm working on now. Uh, so the first one from Bear in London is how fast will High Speed 2 go? So um, the trains have a maximum speed of 360 kilometers per hour, but um, in reality, they'll only be traveling at 320 kilometers per hour. And then Megan from Cornwall has asked how we are keeping the environment safe whilst building HS2. So you can see a, a picture on the side here of a demolition site. And the reason I'm showing that is this is a demolition site that I worked on. One of the commitments we've made with HS2 is uh, to make sure that 95% of the materials we use and have to get rid of do not go to landfill. So that means that we send them so that they can be processed to be either reused or recycled. So in demolition, that's something that's quite difficult. So we have to break down these old buildings and we make sure that we separate all the concrete from all the steel, all the timber. And that means that by keeping the materials separate, that means that we can recycle them all and reuse them all. And a great question from Marley from Cornwall about what do I think is more important? Do I think the appearance of the building or the strength of the building? And as an engineer, I'm always going to say the strength of the building um, because we need to keep people safe. And that's the most important thing that anyone who uses our buildings should be safe inside them. 
so they always have to be designed um, so that they won't collapse them uh, collapse because lots of people would be injured if that happened or could be killed if that happened um, and that's the reality of civil engineering so um, it's really really important to make sure that the design to be strong but at the same time there's no reason that they can't be designed to be beautiful and there's um, uh, an example of London Bridge uh, on, on your screen now and many other beautiful beautiful um, structures as you would have seen in Elsa's video as well and Evie from Enfield has asked how do you know that the works that you're constructing have been done so correctly and properly and that's a really good question because that is basically what engineers do that is the role of the engineer on site making sure that what we're building is being built right so what I will do is I'll have uh, an inspection sheet to make sure that everything has been installed properly I'll check the location I'll check the right materials been used I've checked that the materials in the um, been put in the right way there's the right number of bolts and all of these things that's part of what I need to check as an engineer and I also need to record that by taking lots of photos and um, making comments on the sheets explaining that and that is one of the most important things that an engineer does on site because that's our record to say yes we've built this safely yes we've built this correctly and we've done it to the right specifications and uh, we put the right materials and all of that in so that's a really really great question so I've got a question from Erin from Dennis and from Thomas from Enfield about why I wanted to become a civil engineer so for me civil engineering is about changing the world for the better and you can do that through the application of maths and physics but also learning about loads of other subjects like geography, the history of the area, um, the chemistry of the materials you're working with. I, I really found it a really exciting subject because it was a combination of loads of different subjects. Uh, Marcus from Glasgow about what subjects that you need to study uh, in high school to become a civil engineer and um, so for my A levels I did maths, further maths, uh, chemistry, physics and French uh, but I think all that you normally what you need for uni is maths and physics and uh, another subject whether that's a science or an art you don't necessarily need a degree to do civil engineering a lot of people uh, do an apprenticeship so they come onto site when they're 16 or 18 and so they learn their skills of being an engineer on the job and at the same time they might do a qualification and often you can get the company to pay for that qualification uh, it's also uh, helpful to have different skills so Katie from Fortress has asked what skills does a civil engineer need and I think the most important one is communication so being able to talk to people and being able to get people to do the things that you need them to do because um, there's a lot of working in teams or you might be managing people in the future so uh, communication is really important I think it's also really important to care for the world around you as civil engineers we have a really big responsibility uh, because we're changing the physical world around us and that affects people that affects the environment um, it affects it can affect the whole world and so, so Arthur from Cardiff has asked how old I was when I started my first job um, so I was 19 and that was when I did a summer placement so this is when I did some work with Costain uh, over a summer of my first year of uni so I've got some really great questions from Vera from Glasgow and Alana from Enfield about what I love about being a civil engineer so I really love um, the physical impact that you can have on the world and changing the world for the better through the application of maths and physics and I also really enjoy meeting different people and they're people I probably wouldn't interact with normally um, so you can see some photos on the side there some of the really great friends that I've made through the industry um, and I guess most importantly I, I really love seeing how the world around us has been built I think you go through life and you don't realize how much work has been put in 
uh, to the buildings, to the roads, to the trains and all of the things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and then I've got Taylor May from Walsall asking if I'd recommend my job as a civil engineer and yes, absolutely. I was one of the first engineers in my family and, uh, and it's really great to be able to share that love of um, changing the world. And, so thank you for all of those great questions. I hope you've learned a little bit more about what it's like to be a civil engineer uh, working on site and in construction. And I hope this has made you as excited about civil engineering as I am, and that maybe you might consider it as a future job for yourself. science at work for the time being and we want to thank everyone who's been involved in the videos but most of all we want to say thank you for all your amazing pictures and questions so we'll see you soon bye